Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world and the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. We end every Eucharist service with this wonderful prayer. It's one of the very, very last prayers in our uh, communion service. And it's a very appropriate way to end the service because the whole point, the whole end point of the Eucharist service is mission. We don't engage in the Eucharist and we don't come to church just so that we can be filled, so that we can be satisfied, that we can worship or praise uh, and that we can experience some kind of healing and wholeness through the service. All of these things are, are good and part of what we intend to do in a church service. But the end point of the service, where does it all finally culminate in? It culminates in mission. Going out to serve the Lord in the world. We should really have at the... Uh, um, um, archway or the, 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 the lintel of the church entrance, but on the inside, the word go and serve the Lord, written just above the door frame, so that as we walk out of the church every time we have come for a service, we are reminded that the church service is like a, um, a petrol station. <laughs> We come to be filled and equipped and empowered and healed in order that we can go out and do God's work. That is the ultimate purpose of a church service. As we come now today towards the end of our stewardship program, we reflect on our stewardship of the world. The world. And the first Sunday, we talked about stewarding ourselves. The next week, we talked about stewarding our communion, our church fellowship. And last week, we talked about stewarding our things, particularly our money. Today, we want to reflect on stewarding the world. And the world comprises the planet itself, the actual earth that God has made, as well as all the other planets in the cosmos and the, the stars. All of this is entrusted into our care. And when we're thinking of the planet, we are thinking of the planet itself. And so we're thinking about the physical earth and everything there, the water, the air. We should be thinking about all of the mineral resources, the energy resources that are available, both non-renewable and renewable, and the ways in which we take care of everything that God has created. The earth has given to us to care for. In our first session on stewardship, we talked about the concept of stewardship. And you may remember that I drew on the story of Genesis 2, where God places the first human being in the Garden of Eden and commissions him, tasks him to tend and care for the garden. Not to exploit, not to destroy, not to rape, not to violate not to take advantage of, not to kill, but to tend and care. The notion of stewardship has this very gentle, warm, compassionate, healing quality, tend and care. It's not about managing the world. It's not even about leading the world. It is about caring for the world. This is central to our stewardship and central to the commission that God gave humanity at the beginning of humankind. In addition to caring for the planet, we also are entrusted to care with, for its people. All of humanity is entrusted into our care. And we, as people of faith, we as Christians, are commissioned, invited, tasked, empowered, and equipped by God to take care of its people. It is, I think, unfortunate that when Christians think about how we take care of the world and how we witness to God in the world, that some Christians, let me not generalize, some Christians 
come up with very narrow and specific issues that they regard as being central to that witness. And the things that seem to be most central today are around sexual orientation and human sexuality and around abortion or termination of pregnancy. It seems as if the entire witness of the church comes down to one or other of these two things where Jesus' message is primarily a message of love and justice, a concern for the poor and the marginalized, those who are downtrodden and whose voices are silenced. This is the heart and the most prominent thing that Jesus speaks about when it comes to his stewardship of people on this planet. And so we are invited and commissioned and equipped and empowered as Christians to stand up for the values of Christ and to build God's kingdom, not by forcing our religion down other people's throats, but by witnessing to our relationship with God and our understanding of God, by speaking about the love and the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, and by embodying the values that Jesus embodied in his ministry here on earth. This is what it means to steward the world, that we are, in a sense, Christ's hands, his feet, his eyes, his ears, his heart, his mouth, that we embody the way of Christ's being in the world. Today is uh, All Saints Day, it's the day um, in which most churches around the world uh, commemorate and celebrate the lives of the saints, both the, the very famous ones like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as those ones who, are, uh, who have smaller names and are perhaps less well-known and perhaps even forgotten. The saint that our church is named after is St. Stephen, Stephen is described particularly in Acts chapter 6 and 7. He was a deacon in the church, one of the first early deacons. He was young, he was, we think, about 29 when he became a deacon. And he did not serve out a year as a deacon before he was killed and martyred. And so our church, calling itself St. Stephen's, in a sense, takes on his legacy and says we should live out his legacy in the way that we live our lives. Stephen was a deacon. The word deacon and the office of deacon in the church means a servant, one who assists, one who serves, one who takes care of. Deacons in particular are the ones who go out and care for the poor and the marginalized. Priests are usually the ones who stay in church and pray and celebrate the Eucharist and handle the sacraments of the church. But deacons are the ones who serve the people of God and who serve people who are seeking God. They serve the world. Stephen in particular was entrusted with responsibility to distribute food and aid to the poor, to widows and orphans. There was a bit of conflict in the church at the time where some people felt that Jewish Christians were receiving more benefits than Gentile Christians. And part of Stephen's role seems to have been to ensure a more equal distribution from not just Hebraic Christians, but also Gentile, Greek and Roman Christians. And so he worked with the poor and the marginalized to ensure that they got what they needed to survive. Peter is described as being filled with the spirit of being wise. And when he was arrested in Acts 7, he preached the longest sermon in the book of Acts. Longer than any of Peter's sermons is, Peter, is Stephen's sermon, in which he sets out the entire history of, of God's work with humanity and in which he challenges the leaders of his time. He was a powerful preacher who understood and spoke God's truth 
And for that, he was stoned to death. And as he was about to die, he looked up to heaven and he saw the Son of God standing at the right hand of the Father. And he spoke this out, these words that were regarded as so blasphemous. And he forgave those who were killing him. And he died. In a sense, this is the legacy that is left to those of us who attend a church called St. Stephen's. My current church is St. Stephen's, and the church that I became a Christian in and grew up in my faith in in Cape Town was also St. Stephen's. St. Stephen seems to follow me through my journey through faith. Dear friends, I encourage you as we reflect further on stewardship and the stewardship of the world that is entrusted to us to take up your own role, whatever that role is, in your own place, wherever it is that you are, in your own way, with your own gifts that God has given you personally that are different from the gifts that I have and other people may have, to love and to serve the world. Because this is the ultimate expression of our faith. And so let me close today's message with these words that we say at the end of every service. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>